evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on integrating IBM Skills Build for students. This webinar is co-organized by the STEM Alliance, Scientix, as well as IBM, and it is part of the 2022 STEM Discovery Campaign. My name is Bjorn Bachmann, and I am coordinating European Schoolnet's activities in the STEM Discovery Campaign, which is a joint international initiative organized by Scientix. Every year, the STEM Discovery Campaign invites projects, organizations, libraries, schools, universities, and youth clubs across Europe and the world to celebrate STEM careers and studies. Together with us in the room, we have my colleagues Isidora Salim and uh, Rocío, who will be supporting this webinar from a technical point of view. So if you have any questions with your audio or connection, please do not hesitate to send them a message in the chat. But most importantly, it is with great pleasure that I'm welcoming our speakers for today, Evelina Bernerut and Sam Forrest from IBM. Thank you so much to the two of you for being here with us tonight and presenting uh, with us. Now, let's uh, start with some technical aspects. You will see that all microphones have been disabled. So if you have a question to our speakers, you can just post them in the chat. During the Q&A session, in the end of today's uh, webinar, you will also be able to raise your hand and we will unmute your microphone if you want to speak. Also, to get a greater experience out of this webinar, open the chat where we will be sharing useful information and links with you throughout the webinar. And I see lots of you are already active. It's great to have you with us here tonight. Um, and exactly, this is the point. It's an interactive webinar where you can interact with the speakers. So please feel free to share your questions and we will be collecting them to address them uh, to the speakers in the end. Now, here is already the first link that we will be sharing with you in the chat, but also on the slide. You can now click on the participation list to val validate that you attended in this webinar. This is also for us to prove that this event took place and so that we can continue to organize events like this one in the future. And finally, if you're interested in, in a certificate of participation, this is the only way to request one. Good, let's move on with the agenda. Uh, we have a full program today and uh, we will begin with a demonstration of the IBM Skills Build platform by Evelina Panerut and Sam Forrest from IBM. We will then move on to the introduction of the lesson plan template, which you will need if you want to participate in the STEM Alliance IBM Skills Build competition. Finally, you will be able to ask questions to the speakers throughout this webinar, and we will address them in the Q&A session. So please share your questions uh, with us throughout uh, the, the webinar in the chat. Now, we, before we continue with the demonstration of the IBM Skills Build platform, let me just quickly introduce this year's STEM Discovery Campaign. Now, the STEM Discovery Campaign as I've mentioned, is an international initiative that invites projects, organizations, schools, universities, and really, you name it, any kind of educational organization across Europe and around the world to celebrate STEM careers and studies. The theme for this year's campaign is STEM for All, and STEM is, as you know, virtually present in all aspects of our lives. That's why we believe everyone should have access to STEM education, emphasizing the value of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. This year, we encourage every educational stakeholder to organize events and activities that raise student awareness and make STEM accessible to everyone. So if you organize any activity or participate in an event like this one, share it with the world and post it on the STEM Discovery Campaign map. Within this campaign and within the framework of the STEM Discovery Campaign, there is the STEM Alliance um, IBM Skills Build Competition organized by the STEM Alliance and IBM. So to participate, um, first of all, the competition calls for teachers to create lesson plans that integrate IBM Skills Build modules in class and connect them to STEM subjects. 
The main goal is to familiarize students with the connection between their school subjects and prospective STEM careers and skills required for pursuing them. The best learning plans and lesson plans, I'm sorry, will be rewarded with prizes worth more than a thousand euros and they will be published to serve as good examples for practice. Now, participating is fairly easy. You just need to visit the competition website uh, that we've shared here in the chat and follow these steps. Uh, we also provide a number of resources, so feel free to check them out and uh, read the step-by-step -step guidelines on our website and uh, we will be happy to share more information on IBM Skills Build today, as well as on the lesson plan. Again, before we start, please remember to fill out the participation list, because really um, this is a requirement from uh, the European Commission that funds our, uh, our uh, projects and our webinars here. So please sign up and uh, let us know that you've attended. Okay, let me now introduce you to the experts from IBM. Evelina Pernerut is the CSR manager for Northern Europe and has a background in psychology with a passion about the power of people and how we as humans can create success together with amazing tech solutions. Evelina believes that equal education is crucial for a resilient society and therefore one of IBM's main CSR focal points is education and skills. Evelina and her team are running various educational initiatives in Europe, both for students, educators, and adult learners. How are you today, Evelina? Thank you, Bjorn. I'm very well. Great. And it's good to have you here tonight. But you're not alone. We are also um, joined by Sam Forrest, who is a European, he's <coughs> the European CSR assistant. He has worked on supporting the deployment of the Skills Build platform, as well as undertaking significant training and professional development opportunities. Currently, Sam is supporting IBM's educational training platforms, volunteering initiatives, and competitions across Europe. Sam, how's it going tonight? I'm very well, Bjorn. Thank you. Good to hear, and great to have you on board for tonight as well. So, Evelina and Sam, We'll be demonstrating the IBM Skills Build platform to help educators who want to participate in the STEM Alliance IBM Skills Build competition. Evelina and Sam, the floor is all yours. So, thank you very much again, Björn. Um, so, I will start. Um, and I will start to give you an overview of Skills Build, what it is and why IBM has have invested in this platform and then Sam will go into more details uh, regarding the actual platform and once again super nice to be here I'm really looking forward to this competition and see what we can do together um, so let me see now how to get to the next slide um, Yes, so what is Skills Built for Student? Uh, so Skills Built is a free learning platform for online learning. Uh, and for the students that we meet or that may more often you meet, uh, it's a self-paced fun learning that will get them access to material created by experts, both from IBM and from other companies. And they also have the opportunity to earn various badges uh, to show what they have learned and so that they can use on their CVs and so forth. Uh, you as a teacher, you will get various resources designed for teachers uh, that will help you to use this in your classroom and learning environment. Uh, and you will also be able to track your students' progress and, if necessary, also have access to additional support from us at IBM. Um, and why are we as a big tech company doing this then? Uh, we see goal four of the United Nations Sustainability Goals as one of the most important one. And as you probably are aware of, goal four talks about equal education for everyone. Uh, and I'm sure that you as teachers know this better than anyone, that education is crucial to build a resilient, equal and sustainable society. 
Uh, so IBM has made a commitment to reach 30 million learners by 2030 uh, via our uh, educational initiatives, uh, which skills build is uh, one important part. Uh, so up to now, we have reached uh, over 1.6 million learners via skills built, uh, and over 119 badges have been issued. Uh, and we have uh, learners in over 170 countries. Um, and altogether, if you count all this together, uh, over three and a half million hours of learning have been completed in skills built. Uh, so we see this uh, program initiative platform as a very important part when it comes to con contributing to the societies where we operate. Um, so by that introduction, I hand it over to Sam uh, and I'll be here for questions and good luck with the competition. Thank you, Evelina. So I'm going to talk about uh, the Skills Build platform as a whole. So this slide just gives you an idea of the type of content on the platform. So we're currently heading into our third year. The platform was launched in May 2020. And since then, the amount of content has grown a significant amount. So now there's nearly over 200 individual learning uh, materials. So in that, Skills Build is broken down into three flavours. Skills Build for students, Skills Build for job seekers and Skills Build for educators. Skills Build for students and educators goes hand in hand as the educators is the teacher's uh, version. So that includes uh, courses specifically designed for teachers to take to assist them in the delivery of the Skills Build for students content, along with other features such as the uh, tracking of their students' completions, along with creation of learning plans and channels within Skills Build. So I just want to draw your attention to the bottom right badge, so the purple badge, the AI Foundations for Educators. So that's a badge for, for teachers to take and to complete, and that provides teachers with the ability to then deliver uh, lessons that go hand in hand with the top left badge, the AI Foundations badge for their students. So it's designed that if you're a teacher who has never learned about AI, doesn't know what it is and needs to, you can prepare uh, to teach your students if you want to reinforce what you already know. It's, it's a way to, to further your own knowledge as well as assisting uh, your students. The platform as a whole is good for a couple of different ways and a couple of different ways of how I've seen it implemented in schools. So. It's designed as distance learning. It's an online platform that provides learning. In the pandemic, it obviously became apparent that students are having an increasing requirement to learn from home. So this can either be used to as homework or to set extracurricular activities for high performing students or to use in classroom as it's most commonly used with teachers using skills builds to complement their uh, teaching that they're currently delivering. So, and the two right hand columns just show how the content on Skills Build is, is split. So it's split between technical skills and workplace skills. So the, the original design of the platform was to provide uh, STEM education. Uh, and so we've developed that into technical. IBM is a technology company, so it makes most sense for us to deliver learning in technology. So that's why, uh, probably about half the learning of the platform is uh, technology based. And the other half is workplace skills. And there's a couple of other different skills that go into that. So we've got some really, really well developed badges on developing professional skills, badges on uh, exploration to mindfulness and the new badge, which is the basic principles of design. So we're developing the platform, we're still developing it um, into this is how uh, other 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 things and if you your students aren't STEM inclined and they want to to do some additional learning, we like to start them with the professional skills badge because that's learning that everyone needs to undertake and everyone can benefit from that. And from that learning, they if they enjoy the platform, they then might go, oh, there's this AI foundations badge. That's really interesting. Let me take that so it's a good way to encourage students into STEM 
and providing sort of learning that they might not necessarily uh, be able to receive at home or in school. So moving on to exactly how you can move around in the platform. So to provide over 200 courses at once in a list format would be pretty uh, difficult to overcome. So we've split it into what we call learning paths. So here's a couple of our learning paths. So when you go onto the platform, uh, you may select sort of the artificial intelligence path, and then that will provide you with lots of courses and badges around artificial intelligence to sort of break down the platform. At IBM, we have what, what's called IBM Watson, which is IBM's own uh, AI that we're developing. And we use AI, uh, IBM Watson in this platform. So when your students sign up, they'll be asked some questions on what are you interested in? And then it can use AI to suggest learning paths and badges and courses that it thinks that your students will really, really enjoy to undertake. So it suggests badges we think are relevant and, and learning as well. So to how the uh, how it's all delivered. So I think a big problem with a lot of learning, having undertaken it in school and university, is that it's nearly all texts and really all boring texts. And as a university student last year, when I was having to do online learning, I found it so dull just being told, read these books, now read this web page. So we deliver it in a more dynamic way. So we use a mixture of mediums. So there's videos, uh, graphics, as well as an uh, interactive delivery system, that's how I call it, um, which is the one on the right hand side. So rather than just paragraph and paragraph, you hit the little uh, plus buttons. And so you can see a bit more information. And so you can uh, receive it in a slightly more digestible fashion. So moving on to more specifically about uh, a badge. So we like the badges. We think there's an increasing importance in uh, digital micro credentials. And a lot of these, a lot of the content on the platform is uh, in badge format. So this is a little bit of a deeper dive into what you can expect in, in a badge. So the cybersecurity is fundamental badge, which is a very popular badge currently on the platform with over 15,000 completions. So this one takes approximately six hours to complete. Now, some of the badges are shorter, some of them are longer. The activations into mindfulness badge, for example, only takes approximately two hours. So this badge is split into six modules covering different aspects around cybersecurity. It's designed for all learners. If you don't know anything about cybersecurity, it's the badge you take to introduce yourself to the topics. So it covers things like threats, attack types, social engineering, and it goes surprisingly in, in depth. As part of my role at IBM, when I started about seven months ago, I was encouraged to undertake a lot of the learning on Skills Board for Students. And as a student not that long ago, I found it quite interesting, especially not having studied cybersecurity before. It, even it starts to introduce sort of more of the economic and socioeconomic aspects of why people do hack. So it's not, it, it's really interesting learning I've found. Obviously not every student will find it that interesting, but that's just me. So what I didn't mention as well in the badges is that alongside the learning and the graphics and the text is there's labs and learning activities built into the platform. So in the bottom right, it's just a screen grab of one of the uh, learning activities which you, you take as part of the cybersecurity fundamentals course. So this is a real time map of just what exact all the cybersecurity attacks that are happening and it encourages you to, to look at the scale of the problem as long as as well as the types of attacks that are occurring. It puts it into perspective as a student and really actually is much more interesting and engaging than just saying 100,000 cyber attacks occur daily. And on the top right are two of my favorite badges. So there's the basic principles of design badge, which is a bit different from STEM, but I enjoyed it a lot. So if you want my recommendation on where to start, I would say either the professional skills badge or the basic principles of design one or the cybersecurity fundamentals one if you want to start with uh, IT. 
So on to our module focus. So with the competition that we've developed, we wanted to focus on three specific modules that are in Skills Build for students. One is, is digital technology. So as I said before, probably about 50% of the learning on the platform is digital technology. We think it's really important that students uh, develop skills and knowledge on emerging technologies. So that's why we chose that focus. So the Explore Emerging Tech badge, I realize I've just said a lot of badge names at you, um, but the Explore Emerging Tech badge is one of the ones that introduces students to all these different texts. It was the first badge I undertook. Being an economic student and not a technical student, I didn't realize what these emerging texts were. And it was interesting to have it all delivered as these are what IBM, as well as industry experts, thinks are the focus of technology. So from blockchain, cybersecurity, AI, cloud, Internet of Things. And also quite a lot of the technology IBM is currently focusing on in terms of research and development. There's also professional skills, which I mentioned before. As I said, it's a badge which I believe that everyone can undertake and everyone can uh, gain from. It's a great badge to introduce students to. One of the schools that I've worked closely here in England started with the professional skills badge. They started with that one and introduced, introduced all their students to the platform as well as assisting school in an area that they were struggling to develop their students with. And the third one is mindfulness. So this is one of the what I call miscellaneous uh, categories within Skills Build. So not learning that fits into one of the other paths perfectly. I and Evelina especially believe it's an important skill to develop. And that's why we chose it as the third focus for you to consider when you're building your lesson plans. So I'm sure I've missed bits out. So I'll be lurking in the chat if you have any further questions for me uh, and Evelina. And uh, thank you so much for listening listening to me waffle on about skills build. So back to you, Bjorn. Excellent. Thank you so much. And uh, absolutely an interesting topic. I think it's great to be working with IBM Skills Build in this competition. And I'm actually very much looking forward to receiving all the submissions from the teachers and educators across Europe who will integrate this into their lesson plans. And I'm sure that there will be really brilliant submissions and very creative ways of integrating this in classrooms. Now, let's mm, let me just quickly, um, yeah, draw the attention back to our uh, participation list before I move on with the introduction to the lesson plan. So please, um, yeah, to uh, to sign um, this uh, signature list, just click on the link, and uh, you will also find the link in the chat. Just let us know that you're joining here. And this way, we can uh, also grant you a certificate of participation. But let's move on to the lesson plan development. And uh, as I've mentioned, in the competition uh, for the STEM Alliance IBM Skills Build competition, uh, we call for teachers and educators to submit a lesson plan that integrates uh, an, an IBM Skills Build module and a badge into a classroom activity. Now, what is a lesson plan, you may ask? And this is what I would like to uh, focus on a bit now. And um, I will share my screen in a minute, but uh, we can go step by step through the different sections of the lesson plan. But first of all, a lesson plan, let me explain what this entails usually. Um, a lesson plan is a standalone description of an educational um, of educational activities to be carried out in classrooms connected to a specific topic, including objectives, pedagogical methodologies, a duration, a target age, and so on. So you can use a lesson plan as an organizational tool. Uh, and this helps us to think in an organized manner, visualizing each step of the outline as you work from one concept to the, uh, to the next. It also allows us to reflect on our own teaching performance as we compare methods with a prepared plan. And this is a good way to make uh, adjustment to the teaching styles and the techniques that you might be using. 
Lastly, it also allows us uh, to replicate in different settings and in collaboration with other teachers the lesson plan that you've created, and this can serve as a good example and inspiration for other teachers across Europe and the world. Uh, so it can also be used as training materials for new teachers and other educators. Now, in the next slide, I would guide you through the lesson plan template that you will find also on the STEM Alliance IBM Skills Build Competition website. You will also find the terms and conditions to participate in this competition, and uh, you will find more information there. But nonetheless, let me now go through the basic information of this template and uh, you will see that uh, you have a word document here that uh, contains the basic structure that is needed and it begins with uh, the title so this yellow uh, marked uh, title you can replace this sentence with the title of your lesson plan i will just uh, yeah call it example uh, title and you can save it like this as an author i think it's pretty straightforward you just add your name uh, my name is bjorn bachman and the school organization you can add it here as well for me this would be european school net now the overview is quite important and uh, in this section I would say keep it short and simple, really keep it to a maximum of three sentences and explain what it is that you will be discussing and uh, organizing in your lesson plan. So uh, a very short summary of what is included and um, this will be used also or this will be useful for other teachers who are interested in this lesson plan to get an idea very quickly of what they can expect from your lesson plan. Let's move on to the key elements. You will see a little table here. For the subject, um, you can implement it in one subject or in several. So here you can put maths, uh, the science class. It can also be more specific. So if it's chemistry or biology, really just uh, specify in which subject you are implementing this. You will see that to participate in the STEM Alliance IBM Skills Build competition, there are three categories. And the first one is digital technology. The second one is mindfulness. And the third one is professional skills. And Sam has already given you an introduction and overview of these categories that you will find on the Skills Build platform. So uh, here in this section, just specify which one you are implementing and which one uh, you want to participate in. Then please specify your student's age range. Uh, sometimes, um, yeah, it, uh, it ranges usually across several ages, so just say what age this is appropriate for. Uh, usually the, the IBM Skills Build platform is most suitable for students of 14 years old or older, uh, but you can specify this here. Now, in the preparation time, don't put the time that you needed to prepare the lesson plan, but it is the time that you need to prepare the lesson as such. So imagine you're explaining to another teacher uh, how to implement your lesson. How much time will they need to prepare this lesson? That's the time you should put here. And finally, the teaching time, how much time will they need to actually teach and implement your lesson plan? If you scroll further, you see that the table continues and here you can specify all the online teaching materials that you've used. Um, you will also find uh, offline teaching material and the IBM Skills Build resources that you used. And in the learning objectives, for this section, let me actually switch to my slides because they give a bit more details on on the uh, yeah on the importance and on the organization of learning objectives so the first step is to determine what you want learners to learn and be able to do at the end of class and to help you specify your objectives for student learning you can 
ask yourself questions like, what is the topic of the lesson? What do I want learners to learn? What do I want them to understand and be able to do at the end of class? What do I want them to take away from this particular lesson? So just think about these questions. And of course, um, take also the learner's needs and abilities and their age into account. So it might be different if you speak to students at the age of 14 or if they're at the age of 18 already. And uh, you can also see here, uh, perhaps mm, most of you are familiar with the SMART goals or the SMART objectives. Uh, SMART is an acronym that stands for specific, measurable, acceptable, realistic, and time-bound. So uh, we will, of course, share these slides, and uh, I invite you to have a closer look at this. Um, but you can see that specific uh, means that you should uh, try to be as concrete as possible and really work towards clear results. Uh, measurable is very similar. It can uh, you should, uh, yeah, create learning objectives that can be examined afterwards and that uh, where you can assess whether a learning, uh, the learning objectives have actually been achieved. Acceptable, this means that the learning objectives should be formulated in a way that it's relevant and significant to the learners. Realistic, uh, should mean that it's feasible to actually uh, reach the learning objectives within the means that you have, within your resources, within the time limit also, and uh, within the provisions of your classroom setting. And finally, time bound means that uh, there is a certain time limit. So is it one class of 90 minutes or is it maybe a 45 minute class? And are the learning objectives feasible within this time limit? Now, for the learning objectives, um, we have also added a link here. So feel free to check out Bloom's taxonomy levels. And also this can give some inspiration for you. Um, but moving back to the, the lesson plan template, you will see that the way that you can formulate your learning objectives is in a way that starts with students will. What will they do? Students will learn how to do this and that. Students will be acquainted with a certain subject. Um, students will, and then you can add, of course, several times. Uh, if you have several learning objectives, you can add more. So that's about the learning objectives. We then move on to the lesson plan, and here it's really the grid and bones of your lesson plan. And when it comes to this, when developing and deciding on, a learning, on the learning activities, it is really crucial to consider the types of activities learners will need to engage in to develop the skills and knowledge required to demonstrate effective learning. And uh, this is basically the implementation procedure. It's the development of knowledge and the competencies that you want to aim for based on your learning objectives. Now, these, uh, this learning and the steps uh, towards the, the learning objectives should be directly uh, related to the activities and the experiences that you provide in your class. So, that the students are enabled to engage, practice, and gain feedback on specific progress towards these objectives. As you plan your learning activities, estimate how, estimate how much time you will spend on each, and uh, you can practice this uh, to get a better feeling. You can also implement the lesson plan so you can adapt it before you submit it to the competition. And really plan enough time for extended explanation or discussion, but also prepare uh, to move on quickly to different applications or problems if you feel that the class moves on more quickly. And it's also helpful to identify strategies that check for understanding and students' questions. So it's very simple, actually. You give each activity, each section of your class a title, and you specify what uh, the procedure and the time is. So as an example, 
you can start with an introduction to the topic, uh, whichever topic it may be. Here you can specify, um, I don't know, raising questions to the students and having them answer uh, how they know the topic, if they're familiar, um, if uh, they, they know uh, what, what will be talked about, um, let's say, uh, what mindfulness is. You can ask them, do you know what mindfulness is? Have you had any experiences with this? And uh, then you can give a little prompt, for instance, and these are just uh, examples. Of course, you should elaborate a bit on this and say, let's take the, the introduction, it might take five minutes. Then moving on, you will have a little exercise, for instance, um, and you can also have group discussion. It's really up to you and, uh, oops, OK, this is in a different language now. But, um, so <laughs> you can have a group discussion. And really, if you need more space, you can add uh, more uh, table, more roles uh, to the table and um, continue. Continue here. Yeah, so really specify the name of the activity, specify the procedure, and specify the time. Now, lesson plan activities, they, as I mentioned, should be directly related to the learning objectives. They should enable the learners to engage practice and gain feedback on the specific progress. And uh, they should be related to the abilities, needs, and learning styles. And as I said, uh, please be specific with the time needed. Now, there are some useful questions that you can ask yourself. Uh, so for instance, what will I do to explain the topic what will I do to illustrate the topic in a different way? How can I engage learners in the topic? Uh, and what are some relevant real life examples or analogies, uh, examples or situations that I can that can help the learners to understand the topic? Now, one more point here is that you will see in the lesson plan uh, template is the link to the IBM Skills Build lesson plan. And this is really optional, but you will see that you can submit this template to the competition. That's really all you need to do. But as you register to the Skills Build platform, you will register your organization, you will register yourself, and you can create an account where you can also upload your own lesson plan and have your students registered to the the skills build platform as well. But uploading the, the lesson plan to the skills build platform, that is optional. Finally, we have some teachers remarks and uh, here uh, you can add any comments uh, or evaluation after you implemented this lesson plan. The license, uh, please note, it should be uh, share alike, uh, the, the attribution share alike CC, BY and SA. So this allows the most uh, freedom to other teachers to use your lesson plan and implement it in their own settings. And you will, of course, find some more information on the STEM Alliance and IBM Skills Build for students uh, and educators. Now, if you scroll further down, you will see that there is a place for annexes. So if you have extra resources, feel free to add them here and attach them to the annex. And you will also see not only in the annex, but actually if we go all the way uh, up, you will remember that you put your example title here. And if you scroll to this page, the second place, you can also replace it here with your example title. This is, of course, in this case, it's an example. For you, it would be the actual title of your lesson plan. So with this being said, I have also covered the teacher's remarks in the annexes and headings. So we are now moving on to the questions and answers section. So if you have any questions, uh, please share them in the chat. Uh, you can also now unmute yourself, turn on your camera, and 
you can talk directly to us if you have any questions regarding either the IBM Skills Build platform or the lesson plan template that I've just walked you through. So please feel free to share your questions. Otherwise, we've also received some questions already before. So one question that has reached us, uh, maybe San or Evelina, you can uh, you can uh, explain this a bit more in detail, is how do you sign up to the IBM Skills Build platform? And where can we get guidance? Where can a teacher get guidance on how to sign up and register? Thanks, Bjorn. So, We've got a large team at IBM assisting in terms of how to sign up to the platform and if you do come across any technical problems. But before you contact anyone, we've got this great resource called the Teacher's Toolkit, which I think will will provide you uh, the relevant links and how to access that. So that's quite an in-depth document which lists all the functionalities of the platform including the, all the teachers resources and all the uh, tools that you can access but it also contains a lot of information on how you can sign up as an organization well i would say if you want to briefly explore the skills board for students content first you can sign up as an open registration but just note that you won't have access to any of the educators features we limit that access to organizations. So if you want to access the teacher's tools and the content specifically designed for teachers, you will need to sign up as an organization first. Okay, great. And uh, yes, of course, we will provide this information also on the competition website and in the terms and conditions where we really have some background documents and all the information that you need to sign up and participate. And we have one comment here from a teacher um, or uh, from a participant uh, who says, even if we do not have time for the contest, it is a great platform with excellent ideas and material, self-paced, worth to be recommended to our students. So it's a great comment, but I also want to say that the competition actually goes until the end of April. So you still have a lot of time. We're in mid or in early February at the time of this uh, webinar. And uh, really, uh, this competition goes until the end of April, uh, if not even longer. So uh, feel free to consider this for your classroom practice because it's really a great idea to, to integrate it. And as I've mentioned in the beginning, there are great prizes that you can win if you submit your uh, lesson plan. Good, so then we have another question reaching us. Um, can we take part in the competition if we are primary school teachers? Now, um, Sam, do you want to reply to this? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to. So I've already given my thoughts on the platforms Aim. So it's aimed at 14 plus only, and that's only an advisement and only because of the type of material and the content on the platform. So if you've got a class of primary school students who are really interested in STEM and really interested in technology, uh, you can start them. There's nothing to stop you signing up the class, doing a lesson plan and doing a lesson on AI. I would just strongly recommend that you go through the student's material first in detail to make sure that it suits that class. It won't suit all 11 year olds. Um, some of it will be trickier than others, but if you are confident that uh, it will suit, then there's nothing stopping you at all. By all means, please go ahead. But just if it's under 14, just take extra care that you're not accidentally uh, doing content that will go straight over their heads. Yes, so this also relates, of course, to the learning objectives and the appropriateness of the activity. So really take the needs and abilities and the student's age into account and uh, don't overwhelm your students. But by all means, feel free to uh, to participate and see if the content can be integrated also uh, for primary students. 
Now, uh, I have one question here um, regarding the participation uh, eligibility. And uh, I can tell you that this competition is open to all educators practicing within the European Union and countries associated to the European Union. So that is where we are reaching this competition. And um, that's, uh, that's the, the eligibility as such. I am not sure if somebody was trying to unmute themselves or raise their hand here. Uh, please feel free to do so. Otherwise, ask your questions in the chat, of course. And I would have another question to you, Sam. So if you have these badges and um, we know that we have three categories that we can participate in. So let's imagine I'm a teacher and I uh, sign up and I have a look at these modules. So what would you recommend to include in the lesson plan? How do I integrate this? And um, to what extent do I integrate this in the lesson plan to be able to take part in this competition? That's a great question. So a lot of the badges are split up into modules and a lot of the modules take an hour uh, approximately to complete. And like I said before, it really varies by module. Now, obviously, I would think as a student, I'd be a bit bored if you just sat me in front of a computer and say, go for it in a lesson. I mean, you can do that, but if you want a really effective lesson, what I found with working with schools in the UK is that about 50% of the time is independent learning and the other 50% of the time is delivering content around uh, the content that they'll be self-teaching themselves. So I recently uh, conducted a lesson on uh, pre presentation skills, which is a module in the professional skills badge. And so we had half the lesson where we did some videos and some in-class discussion around a non-verbal presentation. And then we did the rest of the lesson with the students uh, doing uh, the course on skills board for students, as well as the teacher and myself providing support and questions when needed. So that's how I would recommend it. That's what I found is really very effective to, to really integrate it and to not get overwhelmed. So the presentation badge takes five modules and each module takes approximately two hours. A student won't complete, unless they're really, really quick, they won't complete it within a lesson. So it's really something that you can go into the modules, really work out exactly what each module, how each module is broken up as they are broken up. Uh, and then sitting back and going, we'll do half a module this lesson, and then these are the other activities I can do to complement the, the learning delivered in Skills Build for students. All right, thanks a lot, Sam. And indeed, there are many ways to integrate this. Uh, we also see actually one a suggestion from Athanasia here, a flipped classroom uh, could really work well. And I agree, that's um, a very innovative approach to integrating also online materials and uh, using this in face-to-face -face settings. So combining the two. Now, um, that actually brings me to another question and that is, will this be implemented online or face-to-face? And uh, Sam, do you want to react to this maybe? It can be either. Um, the great thing about Skills Build is how flexible it is. So like I said before, you can use it in many different ways. So the lesson I recently delivered was face to face with the students completing uh, the module on the computers in the classroom. However, there's nothing to stop that being online. So on a, a Zoom call like this, and for you to to do a bit of a, a lesson and then to start them on the, on the skills board for students learning the skills board for students learning is monitored by the teachers so once you set up your uh, school on the platform you'll be granted educational access you can then sign up your students and they'll be assigned to you so you can monitor um their completions and so you can see if you set students, if you want to use the platform as homework, for instance, you can set your students required learning. So it would appear on their uh, accounts as, oh, my teacher has sent me to do this module in this badge. 
the student can then complete the module and then you'll get a completion report so you can see in a class of 30 27 of your students have completed it and here are the names of the three students who didn't complete it so you can monitor it and you can use it in that respect it's a really flexible platform you can use it in many different ways um if possible i would always recommend in-person learning and that's from feedback in the UK schools, which is the ones I work closely with, as well as the other schools in Europe, that's how it's worked most effectively, but there's nothing stopping you doing any of the other ways. Excellent, thank you, Sam. And of course, if uh, you as an educator are concerned with your students' privacy, uh, we can assure you that uh, the IBM Skills Build uh, platform complies with European privacy standards. But as a suggestion, for instance, you can also ask your students to submit a pseudonym and just have names such as student one, two, and three, or A, B, and C, or come up with made up names. Um, if you just want to protect uh, your yeah the the digital footprint basically that uh, your students have we have here one comment from juliana and uh, they're asking that uh, well that they have set up their account on ibm.com but to be able to join as a teacher with uh, the class uh, should they use the institution account and is it for free OK, so access to the platform is free for everyone. Um, so in answer to your question, yes, it's completely free. So if you sign up as a student, that's what we call an open registration. So you'll get access to the students. If you want to get educator access, you need to sign up as an organization. It takes a tiny bit longer. Uh, you will need to complete a short form and then it can take one to two business days and just so we can set up your account within the skills Build platform and then send you some joining links so that you can join as a teacher as well as the students you uh, sign up to the platform can be assigned to your school so it will take one to two days but it's completely free and it will always be as long as the platform's running it will always be free all right then we have another question um the competition itself and maybe i can jump back here to the overview slide with the steps to participate and what it is that you need to do so let me just walk you through the five steps which are fairly simple actually so um if you want the step zero even before you start with these steps would be to uh, check out the link for more information so that's the competition website you will find the step-by-step -step guide you will find the recording of this webinar you will find the slides and the terms and conditions as well as supporting documents and of course also the lesson plan template and uh, that's really the go-to uh, place to find more information and then it's really a simple step-by-step -step, uh, procedure. So first of all, you register to the IBM Skills Build platform and prepare your lesson plan. This means that you create an account and you register your organization. And at the same time, you can already think of all the points that we've discussed on the lesson plan today. So what are the learning objectives? What do you want to achieve with your students and which activities uh, do you want to implement? Of course, as you register to the IBM Skills Build platform, have a look at the modules and see what could be interesting, what could be appropriate for your students, their abilities and needs, and uh, see what you can implement in your classroom. Now, the second step is to fill out the lesson plan with the information that you've gathered. So. Basically, it's uh, what we've discussed today. You enter your name, your organization, the overview and the materials that you've used. And uh, most important of all, of course, is the overview of the activities. So fill out the lesson plan template and save it as a file that you can submit because then step three would be to submit your lesson plan to the competition and here you will again find the links and the submission form on the website that is provided here. And it's a, it's a simple form where we will ask for some information on 
uh, where you teach and uh, how you prepare the lesson plan. But most of most important of all, of course, is the lesson plan itself. So submit it here. Also, um, as you register and prepare your lesson plan, make sure that you have at least 10 students of your class registered to the IBM Skills Build platform because also this is part of the competition to uh, to be able to see that your organization has uh, done the the lesson plan with at least 10 students. Now step four would be to spread the word and here you will find uh, social media and other channels where you can let the world know that you're participating in this competition. And uh, finally, you can win your prize. This is um, after the jury will decide on the best lesson plans. And um, we have the criteria that you should take into consideration in the terms and conditions. So really have a look at this document to be sure what you create fits the eligibility criteria and the juror's uh, decision in the end. Now, with this being said, let us come to the final conclusion of this webinar. Um, I'm sharing here once more the links to the 2022 STEM Discovery campaign. As I said, the STEM Alliance IBM Skills Build competition is part of a larger framework of this year's STEM Discovery campaign. So check it out and see if you have any activities or events, even when you participated today, you can submit this in the activity form and it will be featured on the map. But of course, uh, you can go one step further and also participate in the STEM Alliance IBM Skills Build competition and create your lesson plan. Now, as a last point, of course, if you have participated today and you want a certificate of participation, again, fill out the signature list, please, because that is the only way we can contact you and uh, send you a certificate of attendance. And in the end, we would also be very curious to hear your feedback. How did you like today's webinar? Was it helpful? Do you feel better prepared to participate in the competition? Do you feel better prepared to sign up and use the IBM Skills Build platform? Let us know about this and fill out the survey. It will be very useful for us and it takes only three minutes and uh, you can share your thoughts on, uh, on what you think about tonight. Now, this being said, it's been a pleasure to have you here tonight and uh, the recording of this webinar together with the slides will be available on the STEM Alliance website in the following days. We will also send you a follow up email if you filled out the signature list and there you will see all the details you need. And uh, with this, I thank you so much, Evelina and Sam, for your demonstration and for your answers to the many questions. Thank you also to the audience for your really interesting participation. And I hope to be hearing from you soon for your submissions. I'm very much looking forward to this. So let's all from my side, take care, stay safe and have a nice evening.